So just to have a little break from the kind of exhausting round of beekeeping checks that are going on at the moment, I just wanted to share this with you today. Um, I went to my apiaries yesterday to, um, to collect a swarm I knew was kind of uh, hanging on the, on the brambles there. And I put it in this box and I put it in last, it went in yesterday afternoon just to show you what you get when you have monster comb builders, those of you who don't know. See, this was foundation put in yesterday. This whole frame is nearly completely built. The other frames, every single frame in this six frames of foundation I put in is nearly built. And this, there's one frame I put in here that was honey. And on this is the queen. And I think she's already laying into these combs. Just look at that, it's absolutely, look at that bit, bit, the white comb there they built. Let's take this out first. Absolutely amazing. Look at that white wax they built. And I'm pretty sure that the queen has been laying in this already. But I'll have a look. I'm actually putting this into a five over five because this is going to be my finishers. So what I'm going to do is put this, pop this back in here for a sec because I don't want to put it on the grass. I'm going to put it on the pallet next to it or put it off the ground. That's the main thing. So here's a spare box. I'll put that there for now. So at least that keeps the bees off the ground. Let's put that one in here out of the way because that's going to be up top. This is going to be one of my finishes in, in a few, in about a week or two if I need it. At least it's another one growing. But I saw the queen on here. She's a green dot queen. This is a frame they built up. There she is. So I suggest that she is laying, but this is full of nectar. And I gave this to them yesterday. So she's going to be starting to lay if she's not already. So I would reckon that she's going to stay in here. This was a queen that was actually over there before. And I did a film on her last year called Bees Need Space. So it just shows you she's laid. She's laid into there. That's less than 12 hours. Don't know if you can see these eggs. I can see eggs in there. In some of the spaces, there's eggs there. Absolutely amazing. So I know that this queen is already settled down. She's back into lying there. She's down the bottom there. But isn't that amazing? She can go up the top in the middle and obviously this is a this will be a five over five the outside frame they haven't built much yet but they're just starting you just see the flakes of wax they're starting to build up on and that frame will go alongside with the honey that will probably be built out today so i'm going to go and grab three more sorry four more frames two for the side there two for the top but this this swarm is Basically, ain't going anywhere now. The queen is laying. They've got plenty of stores. I've changed their location. And uh, all is good. But we have um, had a kind of weird start. I told you before that we've got cold, but the afternoons are getting warmer. So you can see in my uh, apiary here that it's all kind of building now. We've got a lot of mini plus on the top of some uh, nukes there, the ones I'm transferring the bees into the nukes. So when I'm ready to harvest the frames from there for, to make more mini plus when I start my cell building, I'll have lots of frames of bees and brood. But the, the ones, these bees I'm going to transfer into uh, a nuke and then into a hive afterwards and let them be bees because so, I can test them and assess them for what they're doing. Whereas the other ones you see over there, for example, and all the others are ones I put for um for making mini plus frames so all these queens that aren't going into nukes they're all just standard queens but they seem to be really good obviously but they're going to be just making frames for me so i'm going to be able to have a, a nice lot of um queens at the end of the summer to requeen that's my goal this year to try and requeen as many hives as i can this summer to avoid this but as i said before swarming is going to happen anyway no matter what you do no matter how good your queens are that's my thoughts on it that 
I don't care what anybody says, for us here, our particular flow is so strong. It goes from nothing to the ridiculous and you get brood nest ch chocked up. We try and change our queens. We try and intervene as early as we can to avoid congestion in the nest and we try and give space. And that's our kind of three things we do. We knock down cups that, without, that don't have eggs in. We knock down obviously all the cups. But the problem is when you uh, get that queen and it's made up a cell that's nearly capped, she's as good as going to go no matter what she wants to do. So uh, our other main obviously thing is, the main thing we do is change queens as often as we can. In other words, every second year. And when you're running 200 to 250 production hives, that's no mean feat on your own. But uh, that's my aim this year is to change at least 100 of my worst ones. I'm buying in some queens, but unfortunately the place I'm buying them from, they're delayed because they've had cold as well. So they're not going to be sending any till at least next week. So I'm starting my own cell building now. We're just getting to better temperatures now, so I believe it's a good time to start. But that's kind of the pitfalls of relying on someone else to give you queens. Um, I always start uh, queen rearing this time of year, but I was hoping to have my first 25 queens to go to my apiaries, pull out 25 of the strongest hives, make a split from them to calm them down, and then go to the next lot, and then the next lot, and I'll get eventually get through the whole lot by about mid-May. But now the, the clock is ticking. We're already a little bit later. So... Um, it just puts more pressure on because when we start harvesting honey in about three to four weeks, we're going to have, we're going to still be doing splits and we're going to be also trying to deal with our own mini plus and putting queens into those from the ones that I've made. So it's going to be a very, very intense, busy time. You can see uh, over there, we've got um, hawthorn coming into flower. As I've said before, this is nearly the end of our flow, but this year, because it's all coming in at different times, it won't be the end of the flow for about two or three weeks. I mean, it's like, because we had this hot spell like three weeks ago, what's actually happened is it's it's kind of made everything come at once. So, but it's not all in flower. It's just as a few starting, but it just gives you an idea of what's going on. Everything else is kind of coming into play in my garden here. The cherries, the wild cherries are finished. We've got, um, you can see apple trees over there. It's absolutely fantastic. The apples are just starting to come out as well. I've got Malus uh, sylvestris, the common crab apple there. And then here we've got, um, we've got mountain ash, um, which I love and the bees adore it too. And if it's calm, it does really well. But you can see these apple trees are in full bloom now. And the apple blossom is absolutely delightful. Just look at this here. Bees are going nuts on it. It's all really good. Let's look at that. There's some domestic cherries in that corner there. Another one over there. It's, a, it's, it's kind of, a to me, having all these different things around as a marker as to what's going on, you know. But there's still a lot to flower and the oilseed rape is holding up well because we're not having that hot temperatures in the day. It's, it's holding well and it's giving us nectar these few days. But it is due to go a little bit cooler in uh, about three days so we'll see what happens but they've got it wrong so far and it's actually been warmer than they said so fingers crossed we carry on as we are the mini plus frames i put on are building really well <clears throat> excuse me these for example are monstrous the queen is beneath here have a quick look she's in the top you see i've got a queen excluder there I only put her in last week when I knew the weather was going to be warmer. But these are filling right up. You see they're building out on the top here really nicely. Full of bees, full of honey, and hopefully full of some, uh, some eggs and larvae. So look at that, beautiful. And they're all the same. They're just like filling them out overnight. And this is the second tier. On one here, I've got three on. And the activity there is incredible. It's absolutely amazing. So everything is going to come at the same time i went around yesterday and put extra boxes on a lot of these because they're filling their top boxes really quickly so they've all had an extra six frames but we'll get to a point very soon where you suddenly go right i've got to make the decision and i've got to get these out the mini plus i've got to work them otherwise they'll start swarming because they get so full and so congested and you just there's no matter how much space you give them they're going to go so um well 
if you obviously had loads of resources to give them like an extra two or three boxes, it'd be absolutely fine till the flow stop. But you just get to this point where you have to make that decision. So, right, we're making Mini Plus next week. We've got the Queens coordinated to be ready for then. And what I'm going to do this year is my, um, I'm going to be putting virgins into nukes I've created the day before. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. It's beautiful here. It's amazing how much a week can make in difference. But overall, everything is really good. I better get the rest of these bees back into this box because this only came yesterday as a swarm. So they need to get on with what they're doing. Anyway, take care. Speak to you again soon. Bye for now.